Hi, welcome. It's Friday, well, Saturday, and it's casual day, so, but thanks for joining me anyway. In today's video, I bring you some good news. Today, we can highlight that the functions of government, at least some of them anyway, are still intact. But before we start clapping each other on the back, we will also examine how the Conservative government's interference is doing its best to demotivate and undermine the staff just to screw things up a little bit more. So let's go. Well, just a few days ago, it was announced that the UK competition watchdog had hit several large drug making companies with fines totaling 260 million pounds. Why? Because they've been overcharging the NHS for some medication. Now, the Competition and Markets Authority, CMA to you and I, said on Thursday that pharmaceutical firms Alden, McKenzie and a company called Activist UK, now known as Accord UK, used their position as sole providers of the drug just to inflate its price and they've been doing it for almost a decade. And by the way, hats off to Andrea, not Andreas or Andrew, it's not, a, it's a guy, uh, Coscelli or Coscelli, Coscelli, I don't know how he pronounces it, uh, who is the CEO of, uh, the, excuse me, the CMA. Great job, really good job. Now, what they discovered is that the price of the drugs had increased by 10,000% against the price of the branded drug, which Alden McKenzie had obtained following a buyout of its license from the original manufacturer in 08. Now, it should add, or I need to add at least anyway, that the company Accord announced that it will be appealing the decision. However, having, rev having reviewed those papers and the, the decision of, of the CMA, they're going to hit, hit a hefty legal bill, man. But the drugs involved was, was called hydrocortisone and in pill format. Now, these drugs are very inexpensive to manufacture, especially as the R&D costs have long since to be a cost contributor and are used by tens of thousands of people across the UK to treat adrenal insufficiencies such as Addison's disease. Now, one of the key issues identified in the investigation is that though Addison's disease is still potentially a lethal condition with excess mortality in acute adrenal failure, infection, sudden death in patients diagnosed at a young age, it's eminently treatable and the prognosis is excellent for patients who receive the proper care so long as they can afford the proper care. Now, what is more unusual about this whole debacle is not that it's simply limited to the misery inflicted upon the British people. It's not the fact that it's limited to acts of basic blackmail that they perpetrated against the fundamentals of medicine in the NHS but it's the complicity of the government to reward these charlatans when they must have been fully aware of investigations that were ongoing. And if they weren't, they should have been. It, look, investigation court dates, cases, they don't happen overnight. They normally, in this scenario, take years. Nor, may I add, does the consideration on the decision not to press criminal charges in such serious cases happen by circumstance alone not at all. The NHS had been ripped off. People's lives had been made a misery. And the reaction from the Ministry of Health, the reaction from the PM's office, zero, nada, nothing. But to add salt to the wounds of the, you know, this was not the first time that these boils were caught fixing the market. No, they, they've been doing this for quite a while and they've been caught before by the CMA Though this time it was only for 1.8 million. You know, so what's that between friends, eh? Now, when I mention that zero reaction, contrast this zero reaction from the Conservatives to when CEO of Alden McKenzie's cohort in this act of deceit, a way, way made CEO, VJ Patel, was in 2019, despite criticisms that his companies were right smack in the middle of this crap of collusion in, 
in the act of increasing prices that had already cost the NHS at least £16 million, despite all of that, was awarded an OBE on the New Year's Honours list. I mean, really? Lest anybody forget here, an OBE is decided by an Honours Committee. The Committee's recommendation go to the Prime Minister and then to the Queen who awards the honour. Now, either the Committee didn't do their job, or the Secretary of Health didn't do their job, or the PM didn't do their job, or there were other reasons. Now, could it be perhaps, do you think, that the fact that in 2017, the same Vijay Patel donated 50 grand to the Conservative election campaign? And lest anybody be unaware of the way these things work, if somebody gives 50,000 in 2017, you could be absolutely guaranteed that in 2018, they'll receive a call saying, you know, can you help out the party? But they were able to identify a 50,000 donation in 2017. Now, did they somehow think that the director of a company that had increased the price of a drug from $1 to $88 didn't know this? Or that his cohorts didn't know this? Are we to believe that they didn't know that the Competition Authority in 2015 was investigating Auden McKenzie's buyout, who didn't even have a manufacturing plant, but did have the sales channels? You know, which by the way is why they paid Waymaid and AMCO to stay out of the market. Those companies were about to launch a generic version of the same drug, but Auden McKenzie paid them not to do anything. They paid 1.8 million and 21 million respectively to stay out of the game. AMCO have just been sold to a Norwegian company that does exactly the same thing. They go in, they buy up old licenses for pharmaceuticals, take the competition out, whack up the price. And there are common directors in both. I mean, this is a pandemic. And are we seriously expected to believe that the PM's office was not aware that a former director of Auden McKenzie, Amit Patel, was in the throes of being excluded from becoming a director? Or could it be that the 50,000 the Conservatives received from his cohort in this scam could have influenced the decision? You know, the pile of excrement just keeps building in this, in this party. Anyway, Accord UK, UK was fined with 155 million for overcharging. That occurred between 28, 2008 and 2018. Before April 2008, the NHS was spending just 500,000 pounds annually on hydrocortisone tablets. The CMA said adding the cost had risen to more than 80 million pounds by 2016. Now, it also find the company that took over and all of these, these pharmaceutical companies can go very quickly, but in total, everybody got screwed. The British people more than anybody, the NHS more than these guys. You know, here's a, here's a thing about this, this mentality. The, the guy Patel, the other Patel, Ahmed Patel, I'm not sure if they're the same family, to be honest with you. He sold that company to Accord, his, his company, um, uh, McKenzie's, for 360 million in cash. Then it was discovered that before he'd sold the company over a period of three or four years, that he'd taken out 13.1 million in cash, himself and his sister. Now they spotted it, you know, absolutely clear as bay, caught red-handed, and he's appealing the decision for summary jurisdiction on it. The guy gets 360 million. He gets caught putting his hand in the cookie jar for 13 million, which is, you know, 3%. And he still wants to fight the case. These guys have no morals, no morals at all. But anyway, thanks for listening. I'll see you on the flip side. Thank you.